Today I'm going to take you through a full setup tutorial of SNES emulation using RetroArch. We are going to start from scratch today just to uh, get us all back on the same page. If you've been following my tutorials, I haven't really done a how to get this program installed segment in a while. So we are going to first open up our web browser and we are going to go to RetroArch.com. And now that we are here, we're going to click on this download button. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of the list and go to nightly builds because nightly builds always introduce new features and maybe new bug fixes that aren't present in the latest stable versions. Of course, uh, the one caveat with nightly builds is they might introduce bugs not present in other versions. If you get a bug, just go to the previous build. So basically scroll down here to the retroarc.7zip file, get that downloaded. And after it's downloaded and extracted, if you have issues running it, you need to download this redistributable file and install those and you should be good to go. Now before you run RetroArch, make sure you have it in the directory you want to leave it in because the first time you run the program, it defaults all directories to that, to that location. So if you end up moving the file later, or the, the whole program later, you are going to need to redo all the directory files inside of RetroArch and that is just a nightmare. So make sure you have it where you want it the first time just to really save yourself some headache here. So go ahead and open the folder. I'm leaving mine on my desktop just for presentation purposes. But anyway, go ahead and open up RetroArch. And as you can see, it's very PS3-esque looking. I'm not a fan of the whole XMB setup myself, but you know, a lot of people like it, so eh. Um, but first thing I'm going to do is change this to full screen because I don't like windowed mode. So now that we're in full screen, we are going to go down to the online updater, or updater, and we're going to scroll down to the Nintendo section. As you can see, there are a lot of different Nintendo emulators, but today's tutorial is all focusing on SNES emulation. So I prefer to use the SNES personally. I love that it is 100% accurate and it has no compatibility issues whatsoever. But RetroArch actually added in a more recent version of BSNES after it was renamed to Hygen. It's the same accuracy, but it makes Super Game Boy emulation much more approachable. So this is the one that I use personally now myself. So go ahead and get it downloaded and exit out of RetroArch. So now we are going to go back to the RetroArch website and we are going to go to the docs page for users core documentation Nintendo cores there it is and we're gonna scroll down to the Hygen listing it's right there and the thing about BSNES slash Hygen is it does need a lot of BIOS files to work so if you want to be able to play every game in this emulator you are going to need to do some Google Google foo um, to find all the required programs so as you can see there are quite a few of them that are needed and this is what they need to be named as so Google those again I'm not gonna be providing those that is way beyond illegal you're supposed to dump your own if you don't have means of dumping your own I'm not going to link them to you um, again Google is your best friend in this matter but once you have those found go ahead and get them all copied over to the system directory. Now if you go ahead and go back into RetroArch, you can start loading some games. And as you can see, we are good to go. I loaded up Mega Man X here just to show you how the games run. As you can see, things run excellent. So I'm going ahead and loading up another game that requires one of the expansion chips. Uh, Mega Man X3 uses the CX4 expansion chip from Capcom and if you didn't have this chip in your system directory the game just wouldn't load it would refuse to work until you find the required BIOS file so the great thing about Hygen is that all console lag appears where it's supposed to again everything that would happen in this emulator is exactly as it would happen on a real console that's one of the reasons why I love this emulator so much um, the one caveat to that is that it is very demanding. This, 
This emulator does not run full speed on lower spec systems. If you have like a low end laptop, uh, you aren't going to see full performance with Hygen. It's going to it's going to lag. So if that's the case, you are going to want to choose one of the other SNES cores. There is um, a BSNES performance core which has most of the accuracy of Hygen, uh, minus a few games, but. It allows the emulator to run faster than on lower end systems than full on Hygen does. Now there is one more step if you want to be able to do Super Game Boy emulation. First thing we're going to need to do is open up, I mean create a new folder and name it SGB1 dot sfc and inside this folder we need to put our super game boy boot rom and a program dot rom so the program dot rom is actually just a super game boy rom renamed to program dot rom and then super game boy dot boot rom uh, was renamed to super game boy one dot boot rom and it is good to go we can now run game boy games through the Hygen emulator Let's go ahead and load up a Game Boy game to test that we have it set up correctly. And if everything's done correctly, you are greeted with the wonderful Super Game Boy boot up screen and your game will load and bring up the Super Game Boy Enhanced Borders and there you go. So you can load, I mean you can configure Hygen to use the Super Game Boy or Super Game Boy 2. I don't have access to a Super Game Boy 2 so I haven't dumped it yet. Um, so I'm just using the Super Game Boy 1. Of course, that's not all Hygen has to offer. If you go down into the options menu, you can see that you can adjust the internal resolution um, a couple of times. So you can have 256 by 240, 256 by 224, 512 by 480, and 512 by 448. I actually prefer to use the 256 by 224 internal resolution. You'll see why in a second. When I use um, the scanline filter, it looks better when it's done at 256 by 224. You might ask why I don't go into 240. Um, the 224 option fills the screen, whereas the 240 option does not. So I prefer just to use the 224 option. So some of the other options are color emulation, blur emulation, and scanline emulation. This one doesn't seem to work for me. I haven't seen a difference with it on or off. Um, but blur emulation is really important. It helps fix a couple of graphical bugs um, because the SNES and CRTs uh, did present some blur, so having that blur emulation actually works pretty well. Um, and then I haven't really noticed any difference with the color emulation, so I just tend to leave that turned off. And then, of course, shaders. What video of mine would be complete without showing you a shader preset so if you go down to load shader preset and you can go down to CRT here I love to use the CRT easy mode it makes it look just like it does on my Trinitron and it just looks gorgeous so apply that and ta-da look at that it's nice it's crisp it looks good even at that lower internal resolution um, but here's what I was talking about earlier and why I prefer the lower resolution. If you go up to the higher one, um, it, the scan lines just don't show up as nicely. They do, like It's barely noticeable, it just doesn't look as good to me. So now that we've seen how to get Super Nintendo games and Game Boy games up and running on Hygen, there's one last thing I want to cover when it comes to SNES emulation on RetroArch, and that is SNES games using MSU1 audio. For those of you that don't know what that is, it is basically CD quality audio for Super Nintendo games slash cutscenes slash other cool stuff. Like, it's really freaking awesome. But unfortunately, when it comes to using that expansion audio in Hygen, it is overly complicated and kind of sucks. So, um, unfortunately for that, I, well, for that, I would recommend just downloading SNES 9X or... Thankfully for this emulator, you don't need any BIOS files, even though we already got them, but 
Uh, when it comes to SNES 9X, it is a decent SNES emulator. I just prefer Hygen because it is 100% accurate. It's going to 100% accurately emulate everything that would happen on a real console, and it just feels better to use for me personally. Um, honestly, I imagine a lot of people just stick to SNES 9X. It is more than good enough. There are a couple of games where it has transparency issues, but if you are a person that wants to use MSU1 audio, definitely download SNES 9X because, again, getting MSU audio to work on Hygen is a chore and not really worth it. I do plan to do a full tutorial discussing how to patch game to use MSU1 audio at a later date, so keep an eye out for that one. So there you have it, full SNES emulation including Super Game Boy and MSU1 audio all running within RetroArch. Um, I love the Super Nintendo, it was one of my very first consoles um, ever growing up, so I just have a very fond memory of the Super Nintendo. A lot of games for what I truly loved. Obviously, the Mega Man games are some of my favorites. Chrono Trigger. Um, so many, so many good games for the system, so thank you all so much again for watching these tutorials. I really enjoy making them. I hope that I am giving you guys some useful information out of these. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the SNES, what you think of these videos, and Honestly, what are some of your favorite SNES games? I would love to hear it. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button, like, dislike button, depending on how much you like this video. And as always, my friends, we will see you all back next video.